This is James Taylor, and you're listening to The Creative Life. The Creative Life podcast is a show created for you, the creative. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's a musician, writer, artist, designer, performer, educator, or creative entrepreneur. They share their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, their insights, and much, much more. In this episode, I speak with the communication stylist, Nikki Elledge Brown, and we discuss how creatives can communicate with clarity and confidence. And we also look at copywriting, perfectionism, and bonus addiction. Enjoy the episode. Hey, it's James Taylor, and I'm delighted today to have Nikki Elledge Brown. Nikki is known as the communication stylist, helping entrepreneurs communicate with clarity and confidence through her flagship program, A Course About Copy. She is also a proud military spouse, mom, former park ranger and college professor who shares stories, tips and inspiration on life, business and all things communication with her fans. And it's my pleasure to have Nikki on the show today. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, James. I'm excited to be here. So share with our listeners what's going on in your world just now. Well, in the most immediate, um, well, present right now, we just got back from kind of a whirlwind March where I have a little guy, I have two little guys actually, one's four and a half and one is almost four months old. We just got back from a trip to Texas and I went up to Toronto just for the day, like a, wow. as if that's a normal thing to do <laughs> <laughs> from Houston to Toronto just and back. I was there for about five hours um, doing some videos with Natalie McNeil. And then we went to Vegas. It was like a very exciting, very abnormal, <laughs> crazy month. So I'm excited that we're back in Honolulu and getting settled and we have no plans to be near an airplane for at least a couple of months. So I would imagine that uh, having travel friends with, with, with young kids, it's uh, it's uh, a challenge. It can be challenging. It is. Uh, it yeah. is. And they're great. They're like super easy, fantastic travelers and people. I can tell they're kind of holding their breath when we get on the airplane and they're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then as soon as we land, everyone's like, yes, they were amazing. It's like they don't want to jinx it, so they don't say anything until the flight's over. But thankfully, my guys are great, but it's still definitely a challenge with all the gear you got to lug and just adds a whole new layer of consideration. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, you're, you're a communication stylist. So a lot of what you tell us, first of all, what is, what is a communication stylist? I just made it up. So it, it's probably not even a thing, but the thing, because I literally got the trademark for it too. But basically, I use a lot of word pictures and metaphors to describe what I do um, and just really anything. Like that's one of my things is that that's how I explain and how I teach is using concepts that don't necessarily go together. So when I started my business just over three years ago, I was trying to think of how can I describe what I can help people with? Because I was like, honestly, I'm confident I can help anybody say anything with tact, you know, in an honest way that's not aggressive and it's not passive, like too, you know, sugar coated or anything. So I'm like, if it has to do with words and people, I can help because my background's in the social science of communication. So how and why we communicate the way we do. And so I thought just like a stylist stylist wants to bring out the best of who you actually are. And by stylist stylist, I mean like a wardrobe or a fashion stylist. They want to bring out the best of who you really are. They don't want to make you feel like uncomfortable. You know, this isn't who you who you are. They just want to bring out and highlight your best attributes. And that's the same thing that I, especially in the first three years of my business, have been helping people with bringing out the best of who they really are in writing or in video, just in communication, basically. So let's go back right to the start that you were just talking about having studied uh, studied at college. But how did you first learn this craft of copywriting? Because copywriting is is often so kind of different from what maybe many, many people would have studied if they go and study, um, say, writing at college. Yeah, and that's exactly why my approach is pretty different because I didn't know copywriting with a W was a word until just a few months before starting my business. So I and I still I'm like, oh, I don't really identify as a copywriter, even though I write copy and I my course is called a course about copy, but that's just because that's the word, that's the buzzword, that's what people tend to freak out about. So I wanted to let them know, hey, I can help you with that. But at the heart of it, my approach is just all about like what makes sense to people. And so whenever I was starting my business and I knew I could help people with communication and I thought, okay, if this is a business, it needs to make money. So who could pay me for help with communication? Because everyone could benefit from improved communication skills, right? So that's when I decided, okay, entrepreneurs, I'm going to start by helping entrepreneurs become more effective communicators. And then I literally was just asking people at the beginning, 
what do you want help with? And I w- had like a bulleted list, like a survey where I was saying I could help you with, you know, what to say on social media, how to share your stories in a way that's not TMI, how to do video, how to have face-to-face conversations with people. And just nine out of nine basically chose copy. You know, they wanted help with the writing. And so that's just the direction that my business took because that's what people needed help with. But like I said, it's all kind of, it to me, all goes back to just effective communication and being able to be your own best spokesperson regardless of the medium. And on the on the copy side of things, obviously there's great cop- copywriters like the, the Joe Sugarman's and, and people like that over the years as well. Who were who the kind of early inspirations? Who are the people that you kind of saw something about the way that they 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 communicated in in, uh, in the written form to to persuade people to do something that you went ah okay I, I, I like that because it seems to be especially a lot of online copywriting can feel very uh, spammy and salesy and not maybe lacking in integrity. Right. And again, that's why I'm a total weirdo because that's not, that's not how I came across the idea of it. It was really just like, okay, I can help people with communication. So let's do it. But at the early, in the early days, in those first few months before I started my business, when I was researching, um, I loved just listening to, for example, Michael Hyatt or Natalie McNeil, Pat Flynn. And it, again, it wasn't like I was studying copywriters. I was just noting how people were communicating in a way that really felt genuine and sincere to who they were. And that's the core of what I teach in my courses. I give people a structure, you know, because people are totally overwhelmed by the blank page and they have no idea what to put. So I help them have a structure, but then I just want to encourage them to show up as they are in a very clear and sincere way or smart and authentic, as I like to say. But that basically just means being clear and being sincere. I also came across copy blogger, um, and that that was great and inspirational. But like I said, I haven't actually studied copywriting as a um, as a science necessarily. I've just studied communication, and that's I think why a lot of people who are drawn to my style are drawn to it because I feel like people overthink it and want to make it something separate than who they actually are, you know. And it's like this skill that's outside of themselves, and that's when it feels scary and overwhelming. But my approach is like, no, dude, you already have a voice, you know. Let's just slap a purpose behind it, and then you're good. You know? So, so in that very first meeting where you meet with a client, or that 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 someone's just kind of starting uh, on one of your your courses. Um, and that they're kind of reticent. They don't really know, you know how to communicate what they are about. They maybe don't even know what their brand is about as well. What are those kind of first steps that you tend to take with them? Yeah, well, in the very beginning of my course, I used to work one-on-one. I worked one-on-one with like 160 different people in the first eight months of my business. It was wild and crazy, and then I eventually put it into the course. And at the very beginning, the first lesson is called Writing for Dream Clients. And I just that's kind of where I share my perspective on things too, which is like it doesn't have to be this scary thing that exists outside of you. You already have a voice. It's just as you mentioned, like we have a lot of conditioning from prior experience, whether it was you know writing or working in the corporate world and it's like don't use contractions or some kind of experience maybe in school where your teacher told you you're not a good writer and it's just the story that you tell and so I just try to help people kind of clear through that the mindset stuff first because no matter how many recipes or tips and tricks you have if you can't actually get yourself to sit down at the keyboard then you're stuck before you start so we talk about the mindset stuff first and just kind of paying attention to the stories that you've been telling yourself about writing and tricks for moving past writer's block and getting over it. You know, perfectionism. I'm a recovering perfectionist, and so a lot of my people are too. And so I just always like to encourage people to remember it doesn't need to be perfect. It yeah. just needs to be shared. You know, and, le- and then I say, like, unless you're making a car seat or something, yes, please make that perfect. You know, it's something for safety. But for most of us, when it's some kind of social sharing um, and communication, totally doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be out there. And when you put the focus on who you're trying to serve and who you're trying to help as opposed to making it all about you. That tends to help a lot too. Yeah, that reminds me of, I was watching something the other day. It was Elizabeth Gilbert talking with Marie Folio and she was talking about this perfectionism is just another type of fear really that we, that we, mm. we, that we use. And she said, but it's a kind of high end fear. It's like fear in Jimmy Choo's shoes, um, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was a really nice way right. of talking about perfectionism as, as yeah. well. Um, what would you say is your, your biggest strength and your biggest weakness as a, as a creative person? Biggest strength, I would default to communication because I really do. I just feel confident that I can connect with anyone in, in any way. Like I feel like I could say any message, anything that I need to get across and usually make it pretty easy for folks to understand. 
the biggest weakness so far at this point in my life, I think, is focus and my ability to literally just work. Like I mentioned, I used to work one on one with people a lot, you know, and I was also working two part time jobs and I had an 18 month old and my husband was across on the other side of the world for training. He's in the military. And so I had just a little bit of time to do everything. And I think that actually worked to my advantage because now that I have more white space in my day, it's as if I'm just over here rolling around in it, you know, like it's hard for me to just get started and get focused when I could do anything. And there was a really funny viral video I saw on Facebook the other day. I think it was like a sponsored video, but it was just a funny music video about working from home. And it was like, you try doing something when you could do anything. And the focus for sure has been one of my biggest struggles lately. So obviously, that I think it's a really kind of common thing with, with creative people when they're they have maybe op- a lot of opportunities and at the start they want to take up every opportunity and, tr- and try try everything but then it kind of gets a point where they they have to um, maybe narrow down what 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 where they can really add add value so when you have all these opportunities and, and as an expert in, in what you do in communications I mean you can create an online course you can do webinars you can write a book you can do public speaking how do you what is what is the kind of like the checklist that you kind of go through in your head to say you know this this has more value for for me and my audience than this other type of thing that I could be doing it's got to be a balance between the two because that's the other thing about me and what I've been producing. So like I mentioned three years ago, basically my, my customers are the ones who set me on this path of having a course about copy. You know, it was just like, okay, got that idea. Thanks. Now I just took it and ran with it, ran, ran, ran with it. And then after a while, I'm like, wait a minute, there's so much more that I want to help people with, you know, besides about pages and sales pages. And I'm happy to do that for sure. And I want as many people to, I want to help as many people as I can with that. But there are so many other things. So in in the meta sense, I have been very focused because it's been three years that I've been, you know, I did the one-on-one and then the course and then making sure that the course is as leveraged as possible and the systems are in place, which they're totally not. It's still a total mess. So I just want everyone to know that. Like it's not, it's not like, oh, magically in order to be profitable, you have to have all your stuff together. I don't. And honestly, that literally at this moment in April, 2016 is one of the things that has become a priority for me. It's always been important, but it's never been urgent to clear. Like I have, I'm, I'm very neat when it comes to my physical space. I really like having things, you know, everything has a home. But I'm a total digi hoarder, and that's a problem. And I've been telling myself I would stop and go back and clean everything up, and I've been saying that for months and months and months, and it's really energetically been weighing me down. So that's something that literally this week I'm finally like, okay, stop the presses. I need to get my stuff cleaned up. <laughs> and it's so easy. You know, I was I was speaking to another guest about this uh, today where we were talking about how it's so easy to compare our back shop to someone else's front shop where yes. it looks perfect. You know, you see this person up there on stage or doing this online course or doing this launch or whatever the thing may be. And you're like, I can never do that. I could never do that. Mm-hmm. But, but what you're not seeing is in the background, it's like the the swan on the water, or the, the legs going a million miles an hour trying to, exactly. trying to keep, keep it all, all happening. So it's nice that you actually shared with our audience that you, all those things that you have to kind of go through as well and, the, and those challenges, especially when it comes to, to systems as, you're building, as your business is growing as well. Oh my gosh, yes. And I've even been saying it in blog posts, like publicly, I've been saying it for a long time. So there's straight up documentation where I was doing a periscope, like maybe even last summer, my little guy was running in the sprinklers behind me. (laughs) And I have a whole blog post about like, okay, these are all the things, somebody please hold me accountable. And it's funny, because I don't know if you're, you're familiar with Sally Hogshead and her how to fascinate test. But whenever I took it, the original result. It's about how the world sees you. And my result was the perfectionist. And I was like, no, you know, like I fought it. I did not want that to be the thing. Cause I'm like, no, I don't want to, again, I don't want to acknowledge it. I don't want to admit it. And eventually they changed it to the scholar, which was also perfect. Cause I'm like a professional nerd basically. Um, but my hidden or dormant trigger was mystique. And I think that that makes perfect sense because the world wants to see me and my people, my customers, they want to believe that I have it all together. And my website is, you know, beautiful, shiny. Sometimes I want to take a Sharpie and like draw a mustache on myself with it because I want people <laughs> to realize like, y'all, I do not have it all together. No matter how many times I tell them, they're like, okay, but really, I mean, totally. What is your secret? What do you, I'm like, no, it is a freaking mess over here. Nobody wants to believe it, but I will keep saying it. And hopefully it'll eventually get a little more cleaned up. But the truth is, you know, 
we're all just learning as we go. We're all figuring it out as we go. And no, it's never perfect. And I think you did a really smart thing early on. I mean, it'd been so so easy to get overwhelmed by just saying, I'm going to create an online course in communications, which is a massive, massive area. But by going very, you know, you know very finely into the, onto the copy side, which is and often is very untalked about often in, in uh, communications and marketing. I think that was a really smart thing because now you've obviously built a loyal tribe of people who are really into what you have to say about the area, but who also have maybe these other issues around PR or social media or video or whatever the thing. So I think it's actually a really smart thing that you did there. Well, thank you. And again, it wasn't even necessarily a a plan. And I I certainly didn't imagine it was going to take, you know, like I would still be doing it. And actually, that is one of the things that I'm going to be working on. Once I have my digi clutter under control, I have these workshops that I already told my people I would create, which is they're called the beyond the site workshops, because I want to help people with their copy beyond the site. I don't want to dilute the actual course, because the course is about helping you write your site page by page. So I don't want to make it bloated and like stuff way too much in there when it's not necessarily related. But I'm excited about the workshops when I actually create them because it'll be fun to be able to help people with these other things. Like they're going to be called Dreamails, which are helping people with emails and their dream clients and customers. Word pickles, <laughs> because it's like when people have these really uncomfortable messages that come in their inbox and they're like, oh gosh, what the heck am I supposed to say about that? This is totally awkward. So I'm going to help people with word pickles. It's a silver lining of the awkward conversations I've had to have over the years when I put so much thought into whatever my reply is going to be to this delicate social situation. And then social studies to help people with their social media. And again, like I was talking about earlier, just sharing in a way that doesn't feel TMI or indulgent, but also there's a purpose behind it. And so I'm excited about those when I actually can make myself create them. (laughs) (laughs) And while we're sharing, can you tell us about a time when you worked on on something, your project, you gave it your heart and your soul, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work out like you'd hoped. And, And more importantly, what were the lessons that you took away from that experience? Yeah, one of the most, I mean, most extreme examples I can think of was my very first webinar And it was for a course about copy. It was my first webinar ever. I had already had the course in, you know, going on for about a year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do my first webinar. It's going to be magical. I had all the slides ready. I mean, but again, I, it's like Parkinson's is my middle name for Parkinson's law and how things, you know, take up as much time as you're willing to give them. So it was literally about four minutes before we were going live that I was finishing the slides, but I felt so great about it. And then I'm going and I'm teaching and training and everybody's loving it and the comments. And then I close, I had two computers open and then I, I had the other laptop over to my left and I had my inbox open because I was like, okay, right on a webinar, you welcome everybody who's joining you <laughs> while you're live. And I didn't see any new emails. Once it was done, I clicked refresh on my inbox twice because I was like, wait, where are all the sales? You know, where where are all the emails? And there were zero sales. We had, I think, 270 something people. I wrote a I wrote a, a blog post about this shortly after it happened because it was so it was like embarrassing, you know, like when you're you're walking and you trip and you're by yourself and it's almost more embarrassing because nobody was did, there did to any, laugh yeah. at you or something. <laughs> did anyone <laughs> like, see wait. me? Right. And so all my friends are texting me, how did it go? You know, everybody was so excited. Again, there was great feedback from even the people who were on it. So I was like, what is going on here? And that was a huge knock to the ego because I was like, oh, right. Okay, webinars are supposed to be the big thing. And so I was very tempted to just curl into a ball and be like, I give up, you know, I quit. But eventually, you know, and I gave myself that time to feel the feels. But then I just was like, okay, I have to have to do this again. I can't go out like that. I'm not going out like that. So I did the almost exactly the same webinar just a week later, a little bit closer to the deadline of when the bonuses were going to expire. And I made three changes, which I don't have the blog post in front of me, but I think it was adding testimonials, authentic scarcity, because again, I was like two days away at that point from the deadline and I added some kind of fast action bonus on the webinar. And then I had practiced, you know, because I had actually done one by the time I did the second one. And in that case, then we had 20 sales. I mean, over over $20,000 went from zero to over $20,000. And it was actually even fewer people on the webinar. I think there were 240 something, but you know, I just... I just didn't didn't let it go because you know because it could have been so easy and I see a lot of people do this whether it's Facebook ads or webinars and they'll do that first one and it just it won't deliver for whatever they for whatever reason and they say well 
that doesn't work then does it and, and they'll just move right. on to, to the next thing and so what you did there is you, you basically took a step back you know take a little bit of a knock and then figure out well what let's try and let's kind of get curious about this why yep. isn't it working and i think this is the great thing obviously with the great creatives are, are good at doing is kind of when things don't work just getting getting curious why is it not working don't taking it on all as is as well it's all it's all absolutely my 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 fault it's it's uh and, and kind of beating yourself up about it but just kind of getting curious getting interested what why things aren't working exactly so how do you um deal with those times uh where maybe you're you're working on something whether it's a course or 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 you a webinar or something you're doing and you just you've got a bit of kind of creative block you don't know where to go with it you're kind of stuck on something how do you do to kind of get unstuck i have to get out of my head and usually outside and into my body, as Elizabeth D'Alto said, she's so amazing at this. And really, that's her movement. The wild soul movement is helping women get out of our heads and into our bodies. And that's definitely what works best for me once I'm ready to go there. Because I definitely have some like dark, it's really easy for me to get super down on myself for whenever I'm not motivated. Like I said, the whole focus issue is one of my biggest weaknesses at the moment that I'm working on. Um, and it's easy for me to get super frustrated or to feel like, Oh, does this mean I shouldn't be doing this? How do I know? How do I know? But again, I do live in Hawaii where it's beautiful pretty much every day of the year. And that is a huge benefit for now while I live here to be able to get outside and go for a walk, you know, especially by Pearl Harbor. I love walking by Pearl Harbor. That's where I did the periscope I was telling you about earlier where the sprinklers came on. <laughs> My little guy's like sprinting along in the background while I'm, mama's doing her work. Um, but just getting outside, doing something totally unrelated because I know because I've tried it to just like beat myself up and be like, no, you have to do this. You know, you're sitting at the computer. It's like, you've come this far. You're not going away. You've got to finish this by this time or whatever. That never turns out well. So when I actually have the perspective and the maturity to be able to pull myself out of the situation and go do something totally unrelated and give myself a sub give my subconscious a chance to work itself out, that's usually the best way for me to get unblocked. The other way besides just getting outside and doing something in nature or something totally unrelated is to flip it around. Again, I kind of alluded to this earlier and focus on the people I want to serve. So there's this one example of a bonus. I have a bonus addiction. So a course about copy is about helping you write your site, but then I have bonuses for everything under the sun. That would be like an auxiliary, something you need help with <laughs> for your site. And one of these bonuses I was going to create was a course about copy for products. And so I had had these conversations, you know, I was literally on Skype or on the phone with my product base customers so that I could find out exactly what questions they have so I could fill in the gaps and everything. And I had all of my notes ready, but to actually put it into a formatted, you know, here's the copy to send over to the designer to get the PDF created, there was this huge block. I don't know why I just couldn't do it. It was like over a month, maybe even two months. And then finally what flipped it for me was like, Nikki, Sally really needs this bonus. You know, she mm. has her business now. She needs to figure out the, like, crack the code on writing her product descriptions. She needs to know what these examples are for inspiration. And so who do you think you are to keep these from her when it's all right here? It's almost ready. Think about Sally. And it's literally, I have a customer named Sally, and I was really thinking about her. And so when you flip the switch and you don't make it about you and your process and your resistance and blah, 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 just think about the people you want to serve then that can really change things quickly. And if just thinking about them doesn't help, then actually connect with them, talk to them. I call it a mutual inspiration society where I'll just go into my group and I'll be like, hey, let's do a pop-up Q&A. You know, how can I help you? And it just kind of puts a pep in my step to be able to connect with them live and to remember that I do have something of value to offer and that they didn't have it until I actually offered it. And so that kind of helps get, get me out of a rut too. That's great advice. And tell us about any insights or light bulb moments you've had in this in this journey, this creative journey that you've had in, in your life where you've kind of gone, okay, this is the direction I need to take or, or something's kind of come into your head like that light bulb moment where you said, oh, okay, this is what I need to do now. I think the best, most important thing is to trust your gut, you know, and to know that you do have everything that you need in there. It's really easy to be like, oh, okay, I have to, and again, you're all in your head and you have to overthink things. But in reality, the best things that I've ever done for my business have been from like 
what I call divine hunches. It's like people would ask, oh, do you have a launch manager or who's your coach or your strategist? And I'm like, no, I get the hunch and I do the work. And when I operate in that space where it's like I have this intuitive, I just have an idea that this would be fun to do and I act on it, that's when the magic happens. And so I think that it's really easy to kind of drift away from that and to try to analyze everything with your head. I mean, it's important, obviously, to use your head (laughs) and to use your brain for sure and to have structure. But being open to inspiration, I think, is one of the most valuable things to me in my business experience so far. And um, making sure to give yourself space for that because it's also easy to just get caught up in the busyness. Like I said, it was like at the very beginning, I was inspired. I chose the word faith as my word of the year in 2013. I had no plans of starting a business. I just didn't want to go crazy when my husband was on the other side of the world and we had an 18 month old and I had two jobs. Like that was my, that was my reason for choosing faith. I wanted to focus on faith and get rooted in what wouldn't change. And then that's when I started waking up before my guys every morning and having quiet time. And I started to notice just, just a little quiet time to like journal and reflect every morning. And I started to notice what I call divine breadcrumbs that had always been leading me to this path, but I just never really noticed it. You know, I never stopped to actually pay attention to all these patterns in my life of what people had been encouraging me to do and, and affirming in me, you know, and then finally when I started to act on it, then things just went crazy, really crazy, really fast. And I feel like the, the more you can get into that space, the better off you'll be. Yeah, I mean, it's that, I mean, that's great kind of gems of wisdom. There. I mean, this this idea of kind of getting swept away in that in daily work and other things, and not giving yourself the the time and the the room to play and to be inspired as well. And I can imagine yeah. it's really difficult. When you've got a young family to to deal with as well on top of everything else. But kind of finding that time in your day. Obviously, you talk about it, finding that time for you was in the in the morning where you could kind of center uh, for yourself and. And uh, and that kind of gave you the energy and the and the the, the as you say in France the va va boom to kind of go for <laughs> it and uh, and just kind of start building what is obviously a great a great career for you now as well. And now you're you're teaching other people about communication, but what's the best advice that you've ever received about how we communicate and how we get our message across? Oh man, best advice for communication. I mean, I, I can't think of, I, I had an amazing experience. So I went to TCU, which is a college, Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, Texas. And I had an amazing experience. I, I was a super young master's candidate there because I finished my undergrad in three years. And so then I was stuck around because they offered to pay me for grad school. And I was like, yes, please, because I was only 20. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to go out into the big bad world yet. I don't know. Let me just stay here in my bubble. So I had a great experience learning about communication there and then obviously just out in the world. But what I love to tell people, I mean, this is obnoxious to like quote my own advice, but I would just say whether you're talking to your dream clients or your grandma, you've got to be yourself. Mm. And that's something that I love to at the heart of all the one on ones that I did. And I did hundreds of them in that first year. My favorite part of it, like, yeah, sure, I, I'm happy to help you write about yourself with confidence and get clear on your message. But my favorite nugget of what I actually got to do was just to encourage people and affirm in people that they do have a value worth sharing and that they do have a voice that is going to be perfect for the people who need to hear it. You know, like you and I could be saying the exact same thing, but some people really need to hear it from you. Some people really need to hear it from me. And it also depends on the time, you know, and yeah. where they are in, in their lives when they can actually hear it, you know? And I think and that's so such, it's worth it. I mean, I think that's such a, an important um, distinction you made there as, as well about, because what often holds so many I know writers back is they say, well, someone's already written that book about this subject, mm. but they haven't written it like you would would write it. And I know in our in our in our library at home here, um, you know, I might have books on on a particular thing. It could be Italian cooking, and I may like one particular book on Italian cooking, but my wife likes a completely different book on Italian cooking because it speaks to her. And uh, oh, it's you know a particular point in her life she remembers cooking these things from that particular book as well. So definitely, I mean, this that, that kind of authentic self that you were talking about is so so important, and not trying to just be be a copycat of maybe what someone else is, is trying to do as well. 
Yeah. And that's, that actually reminds me, I was at an event in Vegas a few, oh, like I was saying, which sounds really cool. I was at an event in Vegas. That's so not a word or a phrase that should come out of my mouth <laughs> <laughs> considering my life. But I was at an event in Vegas a few weeks ago and Scott Hoffman, who's a book agent was there and he was giving a talk and he had, he drew this triangle and he was just encouraging everyone like, yeah, you do have a book in you and you are worth, you know, it's worth writing. And he was talking about the message, the messenger and the moment. And just like I was saying with each of those things like this is a message that people need to hear there are a million different messengers sure but you could be the one that they need to hear it from and maybe even if they heard it from someone else this could be the moment in their lives when they really need to hear it and so that I I just loved the visual to be like oh yeah because that's something that I'm dealing with totally on the next thing that I want to be creating which is you know helping and encouraging moms who are building their businesses with little ones at home and I'm like well but they could get the business tips over here and they could get the time management tips from someone who actually you know is good at time management and their life isn't a mess but I'm like you know However, yeah, let's add mess to that. The messenger, the mess, the <laughs> message, message, and the, message the mess, and the moment. straight up mess. <laughs> the mess. Um, and so I feel like that's one thing that my people appreciate me about me is like, I don't have it all figured out and I'm okay telling you that. And I'm still making serious progress. Like I'm, I'm still light years ahead of where I was three years ago. I wouldn't have even dreamt that I could be where I am right now with my business or with my community and all of that. And so it's okay that you have a little bit of a mess, you know, and that's a message in itself. I, th- I think I think you're right then. I, I know people like Kim Luna are great at that, just showing a very you know, authentic self, m- mess and all as well, because, yeah. because we, we love it. And do you have an online resource or a tool like a, an Evernote that you love? I really like Typeform. It's free and it's really pretty. It's for creating forms or surveys. So I use it on my contact page. I have an interview page for when people are inviting me to be on their shows. And so you can just embed it in your website. And it's also, you know, if you want to do a survey or something, but I just like it because it's pretty. You can customize it to your own branding and it's not just like Google Forms and you're picking one of 10 templates or something. Nice. And we'll put these on the show notes as, as well. Some, someone goes to jamestaylor.me, one of our listeners, and you can be able to find uh, all the links that we're going to be talking about to, on, this, on this episode today. If you could recommend just one record and one book to our listeners, what would they be? Hmm. Okay, book-wise, I would go with Living Forward by Michael Hyatt and Daniel Harkavy. I just read it. Well, I listened to it and then read it. Um, It just came out not too long ago from the time that we're recording this. And it just was a great reminder that life is happening now. And you can't put it all off in the name of one day. And I'm having a bit of an awakening right now, three years into my business, where I'm realizing, oh, my gosh, my son is four and a half now. Most of his life I've been doing this business thing and been like, in my laptop, like, okay, sure, just a minute, let me write this one email in the name of one day, you know, what I'm building for us one day is going to help us have more time together. And I'm like, right, by the time he's off in college, no, I want to be more present now. And so living forward is really good about um, just helping you get your life in perspective and live the life that you want one day now and just being really intentional about it. So living forward would be my book recommendation. And what about music? What's the music that kind of gets you going where we, you know, you're out in that beautiful Hawaiian weather. What's what's the soundtrack that you that you love to have blasting? Well, uh, Pandora station wise, lately I've really been enjoying Sam Hunt radio. Which now let me make sure I didn't just turn that on on my phone. But there is a song that I love to wake up to. And so if you ever come to Hawaii, my favorite place out here is called Aulani. It's a Disney resort and spa. And there's this gorgeous composed soundtrack that, you know, they, they had composed just for them for the resort. So there's an iTunes album for it. And one of the songs is Mele Y M E L E and then space W A I. And I love just waking up to that. Like I love waking up to Alani soundtrack. It's my happy place. (laughs) I love (laughs) being out there. It's beautiful out there at Koalina, which is all the way kind of on the West side of Oahu. And so Alani music of the Maka Allah is the name of the album. And I just have two of the songs, but I love setting them as my alarm to wake up to in the morning because it's just gorgeous music. Awesome. And let's imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning, had to start from scratch. So all you've got are the tools of your trade. In your case, it's your, your laptop and the, the knowledge that you've acquired over these years about communications. But no one knows who you are. You have to start again. How would you restart? 
I would do exactly the same thing because nobody knew that who the heck I was when I started and it still was just fine because I knew my value, I knew who needed it, and I knew how to communicate that value to the people who needed it in a smart, authentic way. And those are the three most basic tips that I recommend anybody go by because we can overcomplicate. Overcomplicating is easy. You know, that's like our default. You know, we want to sit there, overanalyze and think what da 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 da. But if you know your value you know who needs it, and you just start connecting with them and communicating and letting them know what your value is, not necessarily by pitching it or selling it, but by being of service and showing up and adding value to people, then that's what's going to get them interested and be like, ah, well, she's the real deal. He's the real deal. What else can I learn? And so that's what I would do. I mean, technology-wise, I just literally had a splash page with a plugin that had a free MailChimp opt-in. And if I was able to wrangle up literally over 90 90 one-on-one clients and over $21,000 in revenue. And that was like my whole take-home salary from the year before in my first six weeks of business because I was truly very in tune with the gift that I could offer. You know, this is what I can help people with. I knew who I wanted to help people with and I was finding them online and then letting them know that I could help them with it. And then it was like a magic storm, you know, the perfect storm. Of events, so that's, I would do it all over again. <laughs> just that's like that. awesome! Great, great, uh, great kind of uh, story there. Of doesn't take lots of technology and tools, but it just takes no, you know. No you, way. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. So, Nikki, share the best ways that listeners can connect with you and learn more about your courses and the other products you have. Yep, you can find me at NikkiElledgeBrown.com, which if you spell it wrong, Google will correct you. It's really nice like that. And then also my free training, the entry into the A Course About Copy world is literally just a acourseaboutcopy.com. And then on social media everywhere, I'm either Nikki Elledge Brown or if that's too many characters, then I'm just Nikki Elledge. <laughs> well, Nikki, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I wish you all the best now with uh, with your next courses and all, everything else that you're going to be, be working on. And uh, I'll let you now get out there and enjoy that beautiful Hawaiian weather with your family. Thanks so much, James. Have a good one. Hey, James Taylor here again. And if you're interested in living a more creative life, then I'd love to invite you to join me as I share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high performing creatives use. I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.